to Studio One. In case you didn't know, <laughs> it's April the 1st. It's April Fool's Day today. Your chance still for a few hours to prank your friends and generally have a laugh. And that's something Dubai has been hearing a lot more of in the last few years with an explosion in locally produced comedy added to the amazing international acts flocking to the city to perform to the comedy savvy audience. Here to talk about the state of comedy is <laughs> Laughter Factory founder Gail Clough and the man that What's On magazine called the king of UAE comedy, Nitin Marani. Thank you both for being thank here. You very much. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I hope you haven't been. Uh, caught out on April Fool's Day no, yet, to be honest. No, no, I think I'm the fool. Don't you worry, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't hidden fools. anything behind the sofa. Yeah. Right now, like we're safe. I checked it. <laughs> Good, I want to start with you if I can, because, yeah, as I mentioned there, comedy is in a good place yes, at the moment, place. whether it be through uh, the local talent that's coming up through the ranks, a number of new nights, uh, opportunity for them to uh, develop their skills, or the big names that are coming to town, Michael McIntyre and Duke, yeah. Eddie Griffin next week, which Nathan will be hosting, of course. Um, is it a good balance between local talent and international talent at the Definitely. moment? Definitely. I mean, the whole thing is becoming more well-rounded now. I think there was just kind of us in the middle, if you like, dominating the whole thing, and now a couple of big names have come in. I think it started with Russell Peters and now Michael McIntyre and Eddie Griffin, and it's great. You know, it's just um, giving people a different style, a different kind of evening. You know, it's a it's a different experience. You can't see the whites of the comic side, and it's a much bigger production. Mm -hmm. But some people like that. You know, they prefer that. They prefer the big stadium feel. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think if you prefer a small, intimate venue, you would prefer a comedy club. Mm -hmm. But now people have got the option of both. Mm. which is good. Mm. And Nitin, to bring you into this conversation, the first time I saw you perform was back in 2009 in a yes. room which had probably like 50 people and now you're busy with your international tours. I'm sorry and, about and that. <laughs> 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 I mean, you, you've grown so much uh, as an artist in the field. How different, uh, how has comedy evolved in the last three to four years according to you? Well, to be honest, uh, when, I, when I started mm. doing comedy here, as I mentioned, there was not much happening. Um, we live in an expat market, so people you know, don't they, they're not basically into comedy. The culture was okay. You're a comedian, okay? What do you so? What do you do? What do you do for a <laughs> living? You know. So it's just uh, when it did start off, I think it was a bit slow. But uh, like like uh, like she mentioned, I believe that comedy is for the classes and for the masses, and that's what you know. This region in general is it's the, the in terms of entertainment. That's how it's growing, and uh, you know now I've, I've I've been blessed. I've performed all over the world, and uh, with my brand Comic Sutra, mm. I've I've taken um, India and. Dubai mm. all over and uh, the response has been amazing a mm. um, lot of local uh, acts are going out of here getting exported and I think the uh, amount of acts are getting imported that's mm. I mean Eddie Griffin mm. um, I'd be hosting that one so I'm already <laughs> a bit nervous <laughs> about that but you know companies like uh, Dunn events and yeah. Yak events mm. uh, who, are, who are planning to bring in uh, Wayne Brothers next mm. and of course Michael McIntyre it's mm. it's yeah. sold uh, two months ahead of time so the response and in general for comedy is they're open to but comedy right now. That begs my next question of both of you mm -hmm. as well because yeah it's in a good place it's in rude health at the moment I suppose a lot of people are asking what's next and obviously you've taken that next step you're developing a brand of uh, comedy humor here which yes. you're exporting That's to the right. rest of the world so do you both feel a sort of responsibility to take it to that next level? Um, uh, for us, our, our idea is just to keep the standard we've got as high as it is. It it's really difficult to try and keep the standard so high. I mean, we've had Michael McIntyre and Frankie Boyle and all these different acts. We've had them in, in the club, and most of the acts we work with are of that standard. Yeah. And trying to maintain that is so difficult, and that's, that's what we're about, really, not anything else. Mm. Mm. Comedy is, it, it has become very brutal yeah. now, yeah. Mm. because there's so much happening where people go like, okay, here's my... 150, 200 dirhams now. I want to forget everything I've been through in the last <laughs> 20 years. Yeah. Shall we begin? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, um, so, yeah. Now, you, you mentioned how brutal comedy has become uh, in the region, and uh, that brings me down to some of the open mic nights and yes. amateur comedy shows like The Gong Show, for example, yes. which has become extremely popular now. Uh, there are a lot of uh, amateur comedians and regular people who have, uh, you know, regular day jobs coming and will, who are willing to take the plunge and start performing on stage. So um, wh wh what is the kind of advice that you give them? Because I know that uh, you have a pretty huge uh, fan following. Uh, the thing uh, with, with comedy is there's the only way you're going to find out if you're good or bad is you need to get on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had, uh, I don't want to take names, but there was a CEO of a company who came to the gong show mm -hmm. and he's a multi, multi-billionaire. I know 
that he is. And he just jumped on stage and he said, I just want to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> he got gonged off in, in <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> but, but you know, the idea is that he was willing to, you know, give it a go and just have a good time. And I guess, I guess that's the only advice I want to give people who want to try comedy is try it. You know, don't just sit there and say, oh, you know, one of these, it's on my bucket list that I'm going to go on. Just regular, if you're a regular person, you think you're funny, uh, only one way to find out. Because mm -hmm. the show like The Gong Show, uh, the one good thing is you step off stage and you're not on the fence anymore. You either step off saying, I'm never doing this again, or you step on mm -hmm. and sign up for the next one. So, so that's, that's, that's pretty much what I'd like to say to you. Know, yeah, I think the public, though, when they go into these events, they don't realize how difficult it is yes. to become a comic. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If you read Michael McIntyre's book, mm. he'll tell True. you seven years before mm. he was any good. Mm. It's about seven years, generally, to grow a comic in the UK mm. Mm. with a huge circuit for them to play on several different gigs every night. So trying to achieve that here is even more difficult because you don't have such a big circuit. So yeah. when people push yeah. through like knitting, that really is incredible. And you both mentioned a word there that, that I think is integral to the whole thing. The circuit as yeah. well there's been a lot of call for more of a development of a circuit more sort of dedicated venues as well knitting I mean you're flying the flag out there as uh, one of the leading comedians out here you're booking the standard comedians as yeah. well how much responsibility do venues have in this whole thing to help promote comedy across well, that, the region. that would be nice if they did like I said, because if people had <laughs> more places to play then we would have better local comics wouldn't we I think yep, you would agree with that if we you know it's it, you need stage time as yeah. a comic you need to, and there's no substitute for that mm. you know you can't sit and practice in front of your friends because your friends are going to be kind yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. your friends will tell you yeah. you're great yeah. uh, and, and the thing like is, I you know, wanted to gong you off and I couldn't yeah because <laughs> I was the host and it was <laughs> that way. But the thing is, you, know, <laughs> you know it's a journey comedy and you know yeah promoting comedy being a comedian you can't get a one-hour massage in 10 minutes mm. you know you have to you have to <laughs> yeah, you know go awful. through the, the yeah. whole process and you know I was in London recently and I've seen some of the top comics yeah. uh, to open mics and I was you know I was in awe I was watching them just doing open mics and that's the actual crux of it mm. yeah. you need to love to be on stage and don't have this thing about oh I'm whoever I am yeah. and then just you know, get on stage and make sure it's about the people mm. and not about you. I think as you. well, the comedy store, people still use that venue in Piccadilly Circus where we book yeah. from. Yeah. If somebody comes from, from um, the States, like Eddie Murphy, they'll still get up there free of charge <laughs> because they just want to feel the rush of the room. Yeah. It's mm. such an incredible room. But they'll also use that. Michael McIntyre and Jack D still go down to try out their new material. Yeah. That's mm. where they'll test it out to see if it works. So you can actually be quite lucky. You can be in Piccadilly Circus and have paid £10 during the week and go in and you'll be like, oh, there's Michael McIntyre on the stage. But he's trying out new material, so <laughs> there is a catch. Now, as we <laughs> mentioned earlier, Dubai is definitely blessed with a very comedy-savvy audience and lots of events to look forward to. And, of course, the details to this will be on our Facebook fan page, facebook.com forward slash Studio One Live. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Yeah, thank cheers. you very much. Thank you. I, I hope you don't get pranked today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed we got through that last seven minutes without, without a clown appearing or something like that. But amazing. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Very much. Oh,